sizable changes coming soon. Thanks, everyone, for the feedback so far. We're hoping to have a pretty substantial update to the effix in this week's upcoming PTR build. This is about the encrypted effix. If you haven't seen the video, you should. It's the pinned video on the channel. Probably one of the coolest effixes, definitely the coolest seasonal effects they've ever made, simply because of the volume of which you can explore it. I'm not necessarily sure, not necessarily sure it's going to work out because of that same reason, uh, but we'll see how it plays out. I mean, I'm really interested in seeing, especially if they're tuning it this severely, within one week if it's being testable. Mostly they're changing to how the buff works, including significant improvements to the two weaker effects and some love for heal areas, which is what everybody's been asking about. So that's really good. Specific effects, power level, and duration for each buff are still open to changing, but our overall goal is to make it feel like each option can be a meaningful choice in different situations. And that's what I was saying. Originally, it just felt like there was the one situational option, and then the other two are just going to battle for power. And whichever one, uh, you know, was mathematically better, that's the one you choose 100% of the time, which sounds like whatever, it doesn't really matter. But then you start to realize, and me and Papa have been testing like Tazavesh, and we accidentally keep killing the wrong one. Like this is going to happen for sure. Um, so I could see a lot of bickering about this. So it's good if they have different goals, I think is the way to put it. Specific effects, power levels, and duration for each buff. We read this. Um, and the, there's room for both pre-planning and adaptation, depending on what your group needs at the time. Also, since I'm seeing some mixed feedback here around the haste buff, I wanted to share some insight on why we didn't make it highest secondary. As a player, it's very difficult to notice a temporary buff to something like damage or versatility unless it's extremely large. Haste directly changes how your character feels, so it makes the effect more noticeable even at lower tuning values. And yeah, that's I mean that's all you need to say right there. Haste is obviously a completely different stat than mastery. Uh, you would know when you have a lot of haste. It's uh, completely the rotation just feels different because the global cooldown is lower, so you're actually able to press spells more frequently. There are other ways to accomplish this as well, such as increasing character size or changing movement speed. The important thing to avoid is players never noticing that they were buffed or only noticing it on the damage meter. For now, we're still leaning towards using a haste buff here, but I believe but I believe have some adjustments in the next build that we'd love to get feedback on. So yeah, I mean, also haste is universally good for everybody, right? Like bloodlust is haste. So I, I mean, <laughs> if you're complaining about that, I don't know why you wouldn't be trying to get bloodlust to be changed to like versatility or something like that. Cause that, that could definitely happen by the way. Uh, but anyway, um, and then a bunch of other people start replying. I don't really have any interest in reading them, but, uh, this guy's basically saying this one, I do have interest in reading. Uh, he says, you know, ferals don't scaling with haste as low. You can play with 0% without problems. Feral Druid. Okay. Anyway, lots of good thoughts above. Thank you. Besides the Feral Druid. Some quick call outs. Fuck Feral Druids. That's one. Uh, no, all buffs will have multiple effects in the next build. One of those will include mana regen. I can't wait to see it. Uh, it won't be in the next build. Uh, but we intend to make boss relics respawn after a wipe. So yeah, that's one of these uh, posts here somewhere says that. I saw that when I was reading it a couple of days ago. Uh, I spoke broadly about why we favor haste for this type of effect, but definitely recognize that there are cases like tank mitigation and glacial spike that play differently. Curious to hear how you feel after trying the updated buff effects. Yeah, but it's just like it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't really, unless I, unless it depends, I guess, on what they're actually doing, but that's, that's all we actually know so far. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll find out. Um, that's all that was posted, right? But yeah, uh, it's a good point. Um, so the current, yeah, in case you haven't seen it, some reason the current buffs are uh, the one is 150% movement speed plus stealth. So I think that one's probably not going to change. Uh, it's probably not going to get a third thing on it, but I do hope that the stealth is made more than 10 seconds because honestly, that feels like that's just going to confuse a lot of people. 10 seconds is really not that long, but you do move really fast. You're basically on a mount or, or maybe even faster than that. I'm not really sure. But you're really fast, so it's not a yeah. It's nice, but I think maybe twelve or maybe more. I think, you know, I I could see it even longer. Like I was saying in the video, like just make both of these thirty seconds, because once you break stealth, like once you're in combat, this goes away anyway, right? And it's it's very unlikely that you're actually gonna like you're not gonna go somewhere for thirty straight seconds and skip trash that you actually can skip, right? Like that's just not gonna happen. So nobody's actually gonna use that for thirty straight seconds. 
but giving you the option to do so means that if somebody does something stupid, you can still recover from it, you know? And, and by that, I mean, like, if you like go like AFK for a few seconds after you get the buff, it's not a complete wipe, which is what would happen under these circumstances. Now, 10 seconds is not very long. For reference, the invis potion is 18 seconds, right? But you do move uh, a lot faster. So I guess that's the, 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 the difference there. Anyway, uh, the Relic currently gives 20% haste here, and the other one is 25% increased cooldown rate. And so my original statement was like, this is the only one that you would ever choose for DPS. Uh, but then, you know, uh, some people started telling me like, no, 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 you should, you want this one. And, and I get it, like, it would be better for the overall dungeon, right? But it's not really going to make a difference on the specific mob or boss you're about to fight. And I think that's all that really matters with these. Like if you're piling a few of them up to try to get a haste buff on the boss, then it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to get a second, uh, whatever major spell we're talking about within that boss fight. It's it's extremely unlikely. And even if you did, it would probably not be in a time when that would actually help you. So even though me as a tank, I would love it, right? But only for the longevity of it. Like the the fact that I'm going to get 25% more dancing rune weapons throughout the dungeon would be great but it's not actually going to help me do effectively more to the boss. It's It just doesn't really matter. I'd rather the haste, especially as a blood decay, because that would actually help in more, more than just offense. So anyway, I'm interested in hearing what they're going to do. We'll follow this, continue checking out on the PTR. Just want to make this post. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts as well. Uh, if you had the option, or first of all, how do you feel about the affix? And then second of all, if you had the option to uh, see anything added to this affix, what would it be? Thank you for watching. If you watched, if you didn't watch, then well, I'm not, not sure why I'm even saying that.